This is gonna be terrifying. Hello, people of the world of internet car review watchers. Today I have a special review for you because it is my 1974 Toyota Celica ST, which I will soon be pulling the engine out, doing a full restoration on, and stuffing a 2UZ 4.7 liter V8 under the hood from my dad's wrecked Toyota Tundra. So today I'm gonna get this thing up in the air, we're gonna nerd out on the tech specs, see how it was once constructed, and then go give it an official bean test as is. I cannot wait for that part. Check out these pipes. It is an aftermarket muffler of some form, period correct. And the fun fact about this car, when I purchased it, it was a one owner car. The guy owned it its entire life and he was an OG JDM car enthusiast that modified this thing way back in the 1970s. Curious to know what brand muffler this actually was. You can see it does have gold overspray everywhere. It was resprayed once in its life back in the 80s, I believe, due to sun fade, and they didn't do the greatest job of masking. Aha! I thought it sounded like it had an exhaust leak. There's a couple little holes in there. That's okay, this is getting replaced. Rear suspension-wise, this RA21 Celica has a four-link with pan hard bar and a solid rear axle. Just a simple shock and coil spring, which is factory, the car is not lowered. This little itty bitty pumpkin houses either a 3.9 or a 4.1 final drive ratio. I don't know which one this car was equipped with. However, it is an open diff. It is not LSD. The first generation Celica debuted in 1971. It was available as a coupe and then later as a fastback. It was offered in multiple trims from ET, LT, ST, GT, and GTV. This ST weighs in at 2,172 pounds, which is going to be crazy when it has a V8 in it. Thankfully, my car spent its entire life near Atlanta, Georgia, so it doesn't have any rust underneath. It's a super clean car, especially because I dry ice blasted it. That's why it looks so clean, like clean, clean. You can see it does have a two-piece drive shaft because there is a little center carrier bearing here in the middle. Look, you still see all the gold zinc on it. It's wild, the hardware is still super clean. Super simple construction, one transmission cross member, easy to drop and remove. It looks like the mid pipe is all factory, but I'm curious, what is the size of this pea shooter? <laughs> no way. 37 millimeter outside diameter, inch and a half piping. It's so tiny. <laughs> Speedometer cable just plugs into the side. It's crazy how well these pinch welds survive. Same thing with the frame rails. Again, super, super straight on this car. Steering linkage and bushings, super easy and accessible. Has little rubber drain plugs everywhere in case you get water ingress in the cabin. As far as the transmission goes, one of the downsides of the ST model is it does not have the five-speed manual you got in the GT or GTV. The ST came with an Iazen W40 four speed manual. I don't know if there was an automatic available. I don't really care. That would ruin this car. Also worth noting, these W40 gearboxes, the older ones had a all steel housing, whereas the newer ones had an aluminum housing. This one, the tail section is aluminum and the front half is steel. Oh, that's sweet. This thing's got a four to one manifold. Starter replacement looks like it'd be pretty easy on this. Up front, the first generation Celica had a McPherson strut style suspension, all of which is manufactured out of steel. I love that the original owner, when they replaced the lower control arm, used genuine Toyota parts. The sticker wore off when I dry ice blasted, unfortunately. Front anti-sway bar measures in at approximately... Wow. 23 millimeter, bigger than I thought it would be. That's what she said. The front engine pan is steel and it's vented with also some little reinforcement straps that tie into the lower subframe. Super strong and durable up here though. All right, it's time for the braking test. This is gonna be terrifying. No one behind me, ready? <laughs> no ABS, I had to let off a little bit. Got a little slideways. <laughs> that was the funnest braking test ever. 
That braking was just accomplished thanks to an absolutely adorable set of single piston calipers and a whopping 228 millimeter or nine inch front rotor. The wheels, they are a 13 by five and a half Carroll Shelby alloy. And uh, fun fact, I guess the original owner had a different set of aftermarket wheels on before these and they got stolen while he was in college. Out back, again, the brake diameter is 228 millimeters or nine inches. However, it is a drum instead of a disc brake. And the wheel and tire, they're not staggered fitment. It is square stance all the way around, same size as you get up front. One of the big differences between the GT and GTV models is they had flared fenders, whereas the ST and other trims did not. I mean, it's got a baby flare, but. Also worth mentioning the period correct TRD over fenders, which were used on race cars of this back in the day look f***ing fire on these. As much as I'm against cutting up fenders on cars, they look so good. In the name of science, I am now going to attempt to give this thing the beams. Uh, bolstering assessment. It's a neat, neat seat belt. It ratchets from the bottom instead of the top. The original owner did do a couple aftermarket upgrades on here, like this Momo steering wheel, and actually have the matching shift knob for this in the trunk. Right now it just has the factory little wooden knob shift knob on it. <laughs> There's zero bolstering to these seats. And the fact that they're made out of vinyl makes it even worse. You just slide everywhere in them. Down here by the rear defroster lever, there is a toggle switch that does who knows what. As far as drive modes go, I have a stick with a wooden ball attached to it, four gears and reverse. That's all you get for drive modes. There's no ABS, there's no traction control, there's no launch control, it's just you in the car. So let's see what this thing can do. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, a light launch. I don't wanna break this thing, it's old. Ready? Oh, I actually chirped the tire. Yeah, oh, it chirped second, hell yeah. I chirped third, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's good. quick back in the day though. Haha, <laughs> love this hood. Rear opening. Underneath the hood of the 1974 Toyota Celica ST is the 18R-C, C standing for California Emissions Compliant. And it is a two liter all iron overhead valve, naturally aspirated four cylinder that produces 97 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 106 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. Keep in mind, this thing only weighs 2,100 pounds, so it might not sound like a lot of power, but power to weight ratio for its day, not bad. You're probably wondering, you're gonna stuff a V8 in this engine bay, it's gonna make it a nose-heavy pig. Well, fun fact, this little two liter four cylinder weighs over 400 pounds just in itself. And yes, those hood vents are functional. Oh, that's cool. It has the valve lash clearance right here on a little label on the side of the engine for tune up purposes. Maintenance instructions. Neat. Anyway, the 18RC has an 88 and a half by 80 millimeter bore and stroke with an eight and a half to one compression ratio. As you can see with the air cleaner on the top, this is carbureted and it has air conditioning, a factory equipped air conditioning system, which is a pretty big deal, I think, for 1974, I would imagine. That right there is super special. The old logo Toyota oil cap, it looks like it says TEQ. That's what a term is used for the Japanese font here for this cap, but yeah, love that it has that. This engine bay actually has a ton of room in it. I mean, look at all this excess space on either side of the engine. I and mean, it's hard to tell with the air cleaner, but there's plenty of room for a V8 in here. Yes, there are countless other engines I could have chose to swap into this thing. However, I paid over three grand to ship a rotted out total Toyota Tundra across country for a reason. This thing is great. Absolutely great. If you notice a little rattling noise, that's the vinyl top delaminating on the roof and just flapping in the wind. It's fine, don't worry about it. 
It'll buff out. One thing I have noticed from driving this car the short little distance to do this review is this car handles incredible for how old it is. I am absolutely blown away at how well this car handles. Normally when I drive cars this old, they're not the greatest driving dynamics compared to modern cars. This car, it's incredible. The handling is incredible for how old it is, especially considering this thing probably needs new shocks and it's got some old ball joints and bushings and stuff. Absolutely blown away. Power wise, it's not a slow car. It's not fast, but for how old it is back in the day, power to weight ratio, this must have been great. <laughs> comfortable to ride in. There's some squeaks and rattles and bangs and stuff. A lot of that has to do with the, the shocks on here. I'm pretty sure at least two of the shocks are blown. The problem with it being a four-speed manual though is this thing will probably top out maybe 105, 110 miles an hour at redline and forth. I don't think these cars get enough recognition though just how fun they are from a driver's standpoint. I, I've never really heard a lot of people talk about old Celicas other than they're cool looking. They look like a little baby Japanese muscle car. On a long road trip, I think this would be fairly comfortable. The seat in this thing's not bad. The, even though it's a small car, I'm still wearing a four inch heel and I have plenty of room. I'm comfortable in here. Oh, why do I do this stuff? Huh? huh? Yeah, check it out. It's actually a usable back seat. I have this thing all the way back just because I'm wearing heels. So this is not really exactly where it would be. I love how it has a little dragon embroidered into the headrest in the back here. And the rouched pockets, these are sweet. It's vinyl, but it's like a woven vinyl. Love these seats. The back seat cushion is hella comfortable, like super comfy. The whole entire seat belt mechanism is out here external from the seat. This is the best part about this car though. I swear that's not a fart. The rear windows roll down. I have my own little crank to roll my window down. It has a clock, but it, it no longer works. It's sad, I bet you I can fix it. I do have some coin holders though, right next to the old school rip it e-brake. Love these. A ashtray. Unfortunately, the wood is peeling right here around the center. It's just like vinyl stick on. Infotainment system wise, it's got a sweet AM FM Conrad 8 track player. Has upgraded Pioneer speakers and surprisingly, they're not blown. Find yours at toyota.com or visit your local Toyota dealer today. <laughs> no way, a Toyota commercial right when I turned it on. That's rare. What are the odds of that happening? That is so weird. Got a cute little glove box with the Celica logo right up above it and some cup holders on the lid. The gauge cluster is super simple on this thing. It's got a 6250 red line or so-ish. It doesn't really stop you. There's no fuel cut. You could rev it to eight if you wanted to. Uh, as far as the miles go, I do have confirmation this is actually 103,000 original miles on this car. Hop in the truck. Inside this trunk is a bunch of old school, genuine Toyota parts that the original owner included with this thing that he collected over the years as they slowly got phased out and were out of production. So all this stuff in here, there's emblems, there's gaskets, there's filters, floor mats, all kinds of neat stuff. It looks like trash, but it's not. I like that it's got so many different gauges on the cluster so you can monitor your amperage to make sure it's still charging your battery and your oil pressure. The and temp. Such a fun little car. I wish it had the quarter glass that you could fold to get a little bit of airflow in here like older Toyota pickups, but I love the fact that the back windows roll up and down. That's so cool and weird. Do you need to V8 swap one of these cars for them to be fun? Absolutely not. I think if you wanted one of these bone stock or to modify the four cylinder it's in it or swap it for a 20R or a Beams or a 2ZZ, whatever you want, not a K-Series or an LS. I'm sorry. I'm not condoning that into this car <laughs> to each their own. If this car would have been a GT or we didn't get them in America, but a GTB, I would not be doing an engine swap on it. I would preserve the car and restore it. But because it's the ST model with a four speed manual, I don't feel as bad. And plus I'm putting a Toyota V8 in this thing and I'm going to do it as clean as possible to make it look like Toyota themselves put a V8 in it, other than the fact that it's got variable valve timing in 1974. But still, I can't wait to see what this thing is like with 350 horsepower or so. It's going to be psychotic.
Before I do the full resto mod on this thing, it's time to give it some preliminary scores, starting with the bean score. And this little 1974 Toyota Celica ST gets a rating of... Next is the cookie score. It's assessment of value, and I'm gonna use just on what this car costs brand new versus the competition. So it gets a rating of... Next is the mechanic score. It's assessment of a vehicle's ease of maintenance or ass paintability. And this car right here gets a rating of... <laughs> followed by the squid score. It's assessment of a vehicle's handling. And the Celica ST gets a rating of... <laughs> Lastly is the penguin score. It's assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle and how much I like this car in its current original configuration is getting a rating of... It's fun. I think these are great cars, whether you want to modify them or keep them bone stock. There's endless potential with them. And uh, I highly recommend if you can find one that is worth saving, go out there and save one. It's a great project car. Hope you guys enjoyed this review and stay tuned on my channel for the progression of this project. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.